Hello everyone. I am Toastmaster Rupali and I'm from Hitam Toastmasters Club. Today I'll be moderating this session. Toastmasters as an organization has witnessed immense growth within itself and its members. The two pillars that help all Toastmasters stand erect are public speaking and leadership. I believe that contests in Toastmasters are a celebration of our learnings and portray the best form of both leadership and public speaking. It enables members to participate on the stage and also gives an opportunity to them as a part of several organizing and leadership roles. Today, we are going to dive deeper into one of these leadership roles. We are going to discuss about the role of a chief judge. And to explain this, we have with us Toastmaster Chishti Basha. He is a scientist by profession and a Toastmaster by passion. He has served as a vice president education and president at club levels and has served as area director in the previous cycle. He is now striving for excellence as a club growth chair in this cycle. Let us now start this session. Over to you, Toastmaster Tishti. Thank you, Toastmaster Rupali, uh, and thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, today's topic is all about how we can ace the role as a chief judge, CJ, as we call the role very fondly. Uh, what happens when any of our fellow Toastmasters approach you to become a chief judge for a contest? There are certain nuances that you will have to consider them. And today I'll be helping you understand what are those nuances and what are those uh, tiny areas which can really help you to ace the role of a chief judge for any contest. Please mind, when we talk about chief judge, it's not only about a chief judge as an area contest or a club contest. We are talking about chief judge as a role. So before we go further into understanding what exactly a chief judge is all about, let us try to understand where does this role come from? To be an effective chief judge, one has to really understand these various aspects of judging a contest. One cannot be an effective chief judge unless and until he had mastered the art of being a judge or a voting judge or a tiebreaker judge for that matter of fact. Our fellow Toastmaster, Toastmaster Joy, has helped us understand what are the basic understandings of being a judge that would really help any individual or any Toastmaster to grow further into the role of chief judge. As it is famously said, with great power comes great responsibilities. The chief judge is one role which holds immense power. The role brings about a lot of responsibilities as well. So when you are a chief judge, you are not only enabling a contest to select a winner out of it, but you are also being held responsible to conduct this contest in the fairest possible manner. But how do we go about doing that? I'm gonna split my uh, talk into three different segments. What a chief judge does before the contest, during the contest, and after the contest. Well, before the contest begins, uh, when any Toastmaster is approached for being a chief judge, he or she should understand one most important thing, the objective of a contest. The objective if of a contest is to select a winner who will be representing the club or the area or the division or the district at various competency levels. So that being a paramount responsibility, the role of chief judge also demands a huge amount of time and commitment as well. So as I've said to you, before you become a chief judge, one really has to understand the nuances of judging. So it is recommended to judge as many competitions or contests as you can as a judge before you take the responsibility of a chief judge. How do we do that? The district provides training programs for judges 
and for chief judges as well. So it is imperative that we as members attend these programs, help us qualify ourselves as judges first. Now, the moment you are approached to be a chief judge, the most important thing that as a chief judge, one needs to understand is how do we go about setting things into place? As I have said, there are three distinct phases of a chief judge's responsibility. So let us talk about what happens before the contest actually begins. The guiding document for any chief judge for a contest is the rule book. Every tip, every rule has to be clearly understood by the chief judge. Please understand, you will only be able to deliver your performance as a chief judge in a fairest possible manner if you understand all the rules in the rule book. That can be termed as any holy document or any holy grail for that matter of fact. Moving forward, a chief judge should also ensure that the contest happens in the, in, in the utmost fairness. The role players perform flawlessly. He or she should also ensure that every member in the contest understands the rules through the rule book. Um, and how are these things done? Specifically, let us go a little further into what exactly a chief judge has to do. A chief judge has to prepare three different segments of documentations. The first documentation is pertaining to contestants. The, con the contestants will have to provide their eligibility and their bios through the contest chair to the chief judge. And the chief judge will have to ensure that he or she should have these contestant docket with him well before the contest starts. The second guiding document or the second docket, if I can say so, should be the judge's docket. The judge's docket has to be built by collecting all the judges who will be voting for the winner in the contest. The selection of judges is again of a paramount importance. The selection of a judges will decipher how exactly is the outcome of the contest. Judging is of paramount importance and so is the selection of judges. So a chief judge should have a pool of judges with him. He or she should be able to understand what is the expertise of judges and he will have to select them very, very carefully. There are various integrities involved in selecting a judge. And that needs to be well understood by the chief judge. Once the chief judge selects all his panel of judges, he or she should also select a tie-breaking judge known only to him. The chief judge is supposed to conduct the whole contest in the fairest manner. When I say so, uh, it has to be according to the rule book. That's the first and foremost point. Second, he or she should also ensure that the judges do not have any sort of conflicts. So when the chief judge demands for a judge's eligibility form, the chief judge should also ensure to double check whether any of the voting judges have any conflicts of interest with the contest. It could be possible that uh, one of the voting judge might have a mentee who is delivering a speech in the contest. There is a possibility of bias that can come in. It can be an unknown bias as well, but that needs to be taken care of during the briefing stage itself. Moving further, uh, the third docket that the chief judge is, 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 should be having in his kitty is the role players docket. Now the role players docket would consist of the timing sheets and the uh, tally sheets. Um, the chief judge should also ensure that the judging process is discreet throughout the, the voting judges 
uh, should be as discreet as possible. Uh, definitely not a scenario where you would want to have the judges noted to everyone with, with, a, with, with a certain dress code or certain placards in front of them. No, that's a strict no. All the judges, including the tiebreaker judges, should be as discreet as possible. Uh, well before the contest actually begins, the chief judge should ensure that all the contestants are briefed. When we say briefed, it is about what could be the timing situations, timing concerns, considerations, uh, and how the flow has to happen. So all the briefing has to be done in the presence of the chief judge, and chief judge should ensure that the contestants are brief and have understood the contest rules. The uh, second briefing is for judges. The chief judge should ensure that all the judges have been briefed clearly and they understood the objectives of the contest. The third briefing is for the role players. The role players include the sergeant at arms, the timer, the tally counters, and every other associated role players for the contest. Uh, that is the part what the chief judge does before the contest. Now, once the contest starts, the biggest responsibility of the chief judge is to first approve the contest. The, chief, the contest chair requests for approval for the uh, contest to begin. And once he approves that, the chief judge should ensure that the contest is run smoothly without any sort of distractions or any sort of conflicts for that matter of fact. Conflicts can arise in any manner. So there are certain rules which have been prescribed for as simple as rules for photography as well. The chief judge will have to be aware of all these rules and should ensure that any contest should happen to the smoothest possible manner. Uh, it is not an unwritten rule. Uh, it's not written anywhere as so, but it is always understood from a chief judge from the practice that one of the best judges will have to be the tie-breaking judge. Why do I say so? Let me help you understand. During the contest, uh, there is a possibility that conflict might arise because there will be various decisions that a chief judge will have to take. Uh, let us take for an example, a speech is being delivered on an online platform and there has been a power cut at the contestant side. Uh, it's been 45 seconds or so. Is the speaker allowed again to deliver his speech in an international speech contest? Now, these decisions can make or break a contestant. Just imagine a contestant who has prepared for close to about six months mentor his speech thoroughly through a mentor. And on the D-Day, when he delivers, he runs into um, unforeseen circumstances. What happens to that speech or that morale depends on the decision taken by the chief judge. So chief judge will have to understand that every rule has to be followed as per the rule book. But there might be situations for which they will, they might not have been any uh, citation in a rule book or the rule book might not have uh, any rule pertaining to that situation. So a chief judge will have to have a big head on his shoulders to think and think wise. He or she will have to take sometimes these decisions in the interest of the best practices as a Toastmaster. So during the contest, the next most important segment is about uh, the results. So there will be situations where uh, the once the ballot counters provide all the ballots to the chief judge and the tallying is done, there might be situations where there could be a tie. And that is where we have a tie-breaking judge coming into the picture. The reason why I said the tiebreakers, tiebreaking judge has to be one of your best judge is to circumvent these situations. The end result of a tie when broken 
depends upon the ballot from the tiebreakers judge. That ballot decides who would be the winner. Um, that being said, the chief judge will also ensure to understand if there are any disqualifications during the contest. The disqualifications can basically happen at three different levels. The first level being the uh, eligibility. The contestant might not be eligible to be part of the contest for various reasons, uh, or the club or the member might not have paid their dues. So there can be any reasons for a, for a member not being eligible to contest, not having this, having been taken care of well before the contest. The next eligibility is about the timing. The timers provide the timing sheets to the chief judge, which talks about the time taken by each contestant. The chief judge will then have to ensure that he is very clear when it comes to disqualifying the, con the, the contestant based on the time. The third disqualification can be based on the originality. There will be situations where uh, they, the, the contestant might have referenced more than the required amount of his speech, or he might have used another speech in his own context. Can that qualify for a disqualification? As a chief judge, one must be clear about this rule of how he or she is going to disqualify a member on originality. In the originality context itself, there can be uh, challenges to a contestant's speech. Now, these challenges can be raised by fellow contestant or any of the voting judges. A chief judge will have to understand that he or she is not judging a speech. You are conducting a contest. You are not here to judge a speech. So irrespective of the fact that the chief judge might know that the speech lacks originality, he or she cannot raise a protest for any speech. Please understand the protest has to be raised from the fellow contestants or a voting judge. Now, once a protest hearing has been has to be carried out, uh, that hearing has to be chaired by the contest. Uh, I'm sorry, the chief judge. The chief judge will call upon the judges in an online platform to a breakout room, or in a personal or an offline platform into a separate room, and will conduct the hearing of protest. The chief judge and his panel will hear out the protest and then make a decision. And that decision will have to be taken up by the chief judge. And that decision will have to be fair. The chief judge will also have to give an equal opportunity to the contestant to help understand whether the context or the uh, reference was, was uh, true or not. There is a very famous example in this case where uh, a member when delivered his speech uh, was challenged for a protest. The judges believed that he had used the whole speech from a magazine. The hearing was conducted and the chief judge was uh, affirmed that yes, the, the whole content was lifted from a magazine. It was a hundred percent copied content. But when the contestant was called upon to give his side of story, he showed the evidence that he was the author of that article in the magazine and thereby establishing the claim of originality. This is a classic example that a protest will have to be heard from both the parties. Once the protest decision has been made, uh, the last segment is about announcing the winners. When a decision is made on winners and the same has been uh, briefed to the contest chair to declare the results, there can be situations where the contest chair might misread, mispronounce, or make an error during announcing the results. If, if the contest chair 
is has announced without any objections from the chief judge that result holds good so the chief judge will have to be very attentive to understand if any errors are being made here because there is a possibility they say for example there's a contest and toastmaster rupai is the first place winner and toastmaster chiste is the second place winner but the contest chair erred in understanding that and she announces toastmaster chiste as the first place winner the chief judge can immediately interrupt the contest chair and correct her saying that no that is not the winning order uh now these are the activities that a chief judge does during the contest now once the contest ends does the role of chief judge end there no the actual role of reporting the results to the district starts at this stage the chief judge will have to submit his report the contest report to the officials via any of the platforms and once done the uh, best practices for a chief judge is to ensure that all the ballots are shredded and all the documents uh, are shredded to ensure that the contest ends there there is no carry forward no debates and no discussions thereof any sort whatsoever on the contest again once the chief judge submits his or her report to the district their role ends there now this is how one can be an effective chief judge the bottom line to being a chief judge is that the chief judge has to be the most attentive person throughout the contest the chief judge is not to judge anyone he or she is not here to listen to the prepared speeches the chief judge is not here to understand the table topic speeches or to evaluate a prepared speech speaker that is not what is expected from a chief judge a chief judge will have to ensure or drive the whole contest as simple as saying we have seen many wonderful movies the whole movies are directed by a director and that director holds the credit for a success or a failure of a movie the chief judge is the director of a movie called contest and that contest can be a humorous contest humorous speech contest a speech evaluation contest a table topic contest or an international speech contest and he or she has an equal hand in selecting this champion speaker so this role demands attention this role is extremely powerful role and hence the chief judge has to be diligently performing his duty um through these matters that's all about how to ace the chief judge's role Thank you so much Toastmaster Chishti for such an insightful session. Let us now quickly jump on to the Q&A part of the session. And the first question that I have for you is how would you how does one uh, how does clear communication play a vital role? Uh <laughs> communication is the backbone for any of the contests not only contests even for our everyday lives communication plays a very key role uh, to undermine its role in a contest is 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 not possible because uh, every role has certain deliverables and if these deliverables are not communicated to them appropriately or effectively there is always a possibility that they may err in this role so when we say uh, let us start from contestant's perspective if he or she has not been communicated about the contest eligibility they may end up 
being preparing for a futile battle. If a contestant does not understand a specific rule and the same has not been communicated properly to them, again, they are fighting a losing battle. So communication plays a very key role. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Chishti. The second question that I have for you is, picking judges is an important role when it comes to being the chief judge. So how do you do that? Uh, that's an interesting question for sure. Uh, now the picking or selection of judges is, is the uh, key attribute for any contest because the, the objective of a contest can only be accomplished through selection of judges. So uh, there are various nitty-gritties of being a judge. And as a chief judge, one needs to be very clear about the pool of judges that they have and the, uh, the uh, selection of judges. One should be clear that um, a judge that he or she as a chief judge is selecting has to be unbiased, has to be analytical in his thought process and has to qualify for all the attributes of being a judge. Because if a chief judge makes an error in selection of judgment, that that result becomes questionable. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Chishti. The third question that I have for you is, how does understanding the term conflict resolution help the chief judge? Uh, conflict resolution is, is by far the most, most difficult task that a chief judge has to do. Because as long as there is no conflict in a, a contest, the happiest person would be the chief judge. But if there are conflicts. These conflicts can come in any manner. There might be situations where uh, there can be a hostile audience uh, or a, a hostile contestant for that matter of fact. He or she, uh, when going through a protest, might cite all the rules that they think they know. In reality, probably they might not be aware of those rules. So that becomes very critical for a chief judge. Hence the point that chief judge should be well aware of the rules in the rule book, in the contestant rule book. If the chief judge is not clear about these rules, there is always a possibility of a conflict arising. And hence uh, it is imperative that uh, these conflict resolutions becomes one of the most difficult tasks for a chief judge. Does that answer your question? Yes, definitely. I can definitely connect with that. Now, coming to the last question, what are some practices one can implement for a smooth contest? Okay. Uh, well, no matter how perfectly you design a contest, there will be situations where things might go beyond your control. Uh, it is very famously said in physics that thermodynamically there is, there is no perfect system. Apply that to here as well. So there is no perfect contest. There will be situations. Uh, it, it all depends upon how that situation is being handled in that uh, time point. Say, for example, the, the most difficult situations for a chief judge is, is when um, he or she comes across uh, a, a particular point where there is no description in the rule book. And how do you think a CJ should make a decision there? So, so, so here, for everything else, he or she can refer to the rule book and, and the job gets easier. But what about for untold situations? And if a chief judge takes a decision there, uh, and if that's not welcomed or not acceptable by, by the audience or, or, or for that matter of fact, contestants. So that's again, a different uh, possibility, which is, which, is, which is very much there. 
So no matter how hard you prepare for the roles or the events, there will be certain nuances. It all depends on how the situations are being handled. And for that reason, uh, chief judge is the only role who can take these ad hoc decisions on the complex or on the D-days at that point of time. Uh, for, for other uh, uh, smoothing smoothingness of the uh, contest, we have the rule book. As long as the rules are being strictly followed, uh, it is unlikely that any of the contests might face hiccups with respect to rules. With respect to the process, that's a different uh, area altogether. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Chishti, for being the trainer for today's session. With this, we come to end for today's session. Thank you so much for everyone that, uh, that is watching us right now. And if you have any further questions, you can go ahead and put them down in the comments below, or you can reach out to us at the email mentioned in the description. With this, thank you so much. Thank you.